Welcome back to another edition of the Stacy Carter Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Thank you for being with us. Being brought to you by Chick-fil-A and also by Blue Lizard Australian Sunscreen and also by Champion Chevrolet on the Bristol Highway Motor Mile. And Coach, good to get you back over here talking about getting back in the win column. Good win for our football team Friday night. Kind of kind of took care of some things after losing a tough one. And winning cures a lot of pains, doesn't it? It definitely does, you know, and I thought we played well, too, and that helps out, too. You know, uh, you know, we needed a win. And, you know, after the Marable game, we needed something to get us back on track. And uh, and playing well uh, kind of helps that, too. So uh, I thought it was a good effort by the whole entire football team. You know, the de- defense played very well. I thought the offensive line played, you know, very well also, which we wanted those two things to really step up, and we thought they did. So, uh, you know, just a good job for the whole bunch. In warm-ups, I was out there interviewing you for the pregame show. I know. Just the guys had a different look on their face. I mean, look more focused, more businesslike, more than usual than normally are anyway. But this had a different air about him Friday night, and it showed in the score, thirty-five nothing. Well, I mean, I thought they know. You know, they knew their leader was down. They need they all had to step it up, and you know, maybe this will be beneficial to us in the long run. You know, to know that, you know, it they have to have that kind of, you know. They have to have that kind of execution all the time. You know, having Justin or not having Justin, you have to do that. I think the guys knew they had to step up, and uh, and I saw them step up in a lot of different ways, and, uh, and especially, you know, the defense. and knew they had to have a big game. They stepped up and had a great game. I think we gave up one play, basically, and the rest of the time we played just, uh, you know, lots out. And uh, offensive line, I thought they stepped up. So that, that was the two things, and the kids were more focused, but they were ready to go. Final non-conference game of the season, a very satisfying 35 0 win over Daniel Boone at Daniel Boone. So everything from here on out is conference, which is what you want, Big East Conference play. And we're going to take a break and go back and take a look at the highlights and break down some of the stats of the game and the win over Daniel Boone. Then a little bit later in the show, get you ready for Big East Conference action Friday night on the road against the Hawks of Hardin Valley. More after this on the Stacy Carter Coaches Show. Trucks, 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 and more trucks. At Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City, we have Silverado trucks everywhere with discounts up to 11,000 off MSRP on select Silverado All-Star Crew Cabs. 15 Spark, 10,995. 15 Sonic, 12,995. 15 Track, 17,995. 15 Equinox, 20,995. Shop us online 24 seven and don't forget our Saturday service hours. Champion Chevrolet on the Motor Mile in Johnson City where they leave you asking, how do they do that? Whether lying on the beach, just working in your yard, or watching NASCAR racing this weekend in Bristol, your skin needs protection from the harmful effects of the sun. Blue Lizard Sunscreen delivers broad-spectrum SPF 30-plus protection that comes with smart bottle technology. Our bottle changes colors in the presence of UV rays, reminding you to cover up. It's the brand most recommended by pharmacists and dermatologists nationwide. Plus, it's made right here in the Tri-Cities. Blue Lizard Sunscreen, we've got you covered. Get free coffee all February long. Just ask for a cup of our hot or iced coffee. Welcome back to the Stacey Carter Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Every Wednesday noon, we put up a brand new show, easy to find, at TomTaylorSports.com. And again, tell your neighbors, tell your friends, the uh, hits keep going up, uh, the views, and we appreciate that. Of course, it's video and audio on demand, so you can watch it anytime, stop it, rewatch it again. You can send it to somebody somewhere else, say, hey, man, let's watch this Science Hill uh, Coaches Show. So it's very easy to do. That's the, that's the wave of the future, obviously, is video and audio on demand. Coach, 35 nothing, big win over Daniel Boone, and it got started early again with a with a touchdown run by King Russell. Let's take a look at the highlights package, and and King uh, had a heck of a run to get that get it going for the Hilltoppers. You know, King had a great run on the outside zone. Uh, we didn't block it right. It was kind of uh, you know King King made a guy miss. We were uh, running outside zone to the left, and we didn't block the end, which is which is a no no, and I mean which is a really a bad play. It could have went terrible, but he was able to make athletic play, get around him, and end up uh, getting the end zone score. Uh, so, uh, you know, not great execution, but, uh, you know, great athletic play by King. 
Second touchdown of his career at Science Hill. Of course, the transfer from Dobbins minute. Ten carries, 36 yards, had a touchdown running against Irwin. And so the second one of his career is a, new, a good one. Got us going. More leggings point after 7 nothing. Then you come right back. And, man, what a uh, – see this highlight. Uh, to set it up, let's talk about our defense because their big play of the game, I felt like, and, and we talked about this before we went on the air, was the, uh, the stoppage down there deep by the Science Hill defense after a big play by Daniel Boone. Well, I mean, it, the big play by Daniel Boone was a well-executed play. They hit a slant, and uh, I think the the great thing about it, and we saw it at Maryville too, Elijah, you know, came out of nowhere and was able to get down there and stop him from getting in the end zone, which gave us a chance to stop him, which, uh, you know, it's good to have guys and a great hustle play for that. So then they get down there, and our defense really stepped up and, uh, and was able to have the goal line stand, and they tried to sweep it to the left, and uh, and, the, and he, the quarterback didn't get anything, and we had great penetration and was able to stop him. But that was a big play, a big momentum boost uh, in the whole game. Absolutely. I thought it was a play of the game because after that, Mathis, as Coach said, made the touchdown-saving tackle. Then a couple of plays later, here's the next highlight, an 85-yard run with 2.17 to go in the period. Uh, what a run. Set this up by Elijah because he just turned on the Jets and he was gone. Well, we've been running a few jet sweeps, and they, and they were they were trying to take their jet sweeps out. And we, and we we knew that they were probably going to take away something like that, and uh, but we wanted to keep running them to set this play up. And we, we ran a jet sweep, and then we pulled the guards from the backside, and uh, like a old buck sweep, and uh, and Elijah faked it and just followed those guards in there. Great. Great job by our offensive line. Then when he got out, he uh, he took it to a distance. So just a great play. Talking to Coach Stacy Carter, the Stacy Carter Coaches Show. So obviously, folks know now that you used Elijah back there in that Wildcat package. Is that something that was a one-time thing? We may see it again later this season. Well, I think you got to find ways for him to touch the football. Uh, I mean, he's a special kid and a, and a special player. I, in my opinion, you, you know, he's one of the best, but not the best player in East Tennessee. So he he's that dynamic. So uh, you look back at Maribel, he probably carried the ball only four times and, and gained 50 yards plus a 95 yard uh, touchdown run. So you definitely don't want to get him hurt, you know. So, but you want to make sure that he gets the ball in, in different ways, and that may be a way we do it. I think we got to find a way for him to get the ball. You know, if it's a wild cap package if it's a running back and of course use a receiver in a slot too but I think we got to find more ways because he's such a dangerous weapon the thing he can do is he can take it to the house and mm -hmm. I and uh that that relieves uh you know uh, helps the defense a lot I mean it changes the way the other team plays uh, when somebody can do that and having that threat and you already got a great runner in Justin already so you I mean we might you might see that some in some, some change-ups so with that touchdown into the first quarter, 14 nothing Science Hill, they come right back. And, you know, we talked about last week the, the tough loss to Maryville, but there's always positives, and you talked about this last week. You found a young man that could step up and throw the football in Jalen Adams. That plus the reps he had of the JV game, he looked very sharp the other night. And the next touchdown, the next highlight was the pass from Jalen to Tyreek Perkins from 20 yards out. And, and uh, nice throw, nice catch, set this highlight up for us. Well, we're in trips formation, and uh, and we sprint to the right. And, uh, you know, let's say Coach Jenkins does a good job, and he was uh, you know, he was loading the box and, uh, you know, running a, a 5 2 scheme, which on trips, that's really loading the box, seven in the box. I mean, we were able to sprint out and run a flood pattern out. He hit Tyreek on. On the uh, one route, which is our little five-yard out, and and uh, he caught it and uh, turned it up field and was able to take the, the rest away. More legs point after 21 nothing. Science Hill, final touchdown of the first half. Here we go again, number 25, his seventh touchdown of the season. Set up this 38-yard run by Elijah. Well, it was a third down and short, and, uh, and I think we had a timeout. We didn't have the right personnel in, and uh, and we uh, had our bunch formation. We were doing that. We brought Bryson Tolley in to be the lead back there for the block. So uh, basically run a double eye isolation with uh, Nakai Smith and Bryson Tolley coming in there, and that's that's two horses coming in at, yeah. at the point of impact, and they were able to uh, you know move those linebackers out. The O-line did a good job in this. Uh, I mean, of course, Elijah got right behind them and was able to bust out of there pretty easily. Halftime, 28 nothing. Science Hill, last touchdown to the ball game. A good highlight. Again, Nakai Smith, great call. I mean, this was uh, caught everybody off guard, that Boone defense. Great call by you, and, of course, Jalen put it right where he needed, and a great touchdown catch by Nakai. Set this one up for well, us. Well, very good execution by the guys. We'd run that jet sweep, and uh, they'd been stopping the jet sweep, so we come back on the jet sweep, and uh, he had two options. Uh, he'd go to the front side tight end, and if that wasn't open, come back to the back side tight end. He did a great job doing that. Perfect throw, great catch, and uh, and uh, another great touchdown for Nakai. I think it's uh, two games in a row. He scored from the other side last time, so it was uh, actually three games in a row he's called touchdown passes, so another big night for Nakaya. 
Final score, 35-0 Science Hill. Moving on now to take on Hardin Valley this week on a, on a conference win, I should say. We hope on the road down in, in uh, Metro Knoxville. Here's some numbers before we go to the break. Uh, total offense, uh, thanks to Kevin Arman, the best stat man of the business. 420 yards of offense for Science Hill against 160 for Daniel Boone. Uh, rushing the ball, Coach, we had 324. We held them to 76 on 32 carries, 76 yards of rushing. What a job our defense. What a great job. I mean, you know, and just uh, a team and uh, a coach that does a good job running the football, too. I thought that was – it showed uh, what our defense can do, and, uh, and they made some big stops, a lot of plays for losses. And, uh, you know, the Daniel Boone was not able to hold the ball at all like they have been in, in recent years and take the ball away from us. And uh, so it was uh, it was a great, great job by our defense and great, great team effort. Just a super job. Coach Nelson had them ready, and they just played well. And the penalty bug we normally have seen over the last couple of games, that was down. You said we got to keep cleaning this thing up, and we have, and, and not a lot of penalties Friday night. That was good. It was very good. And, I mean, we just got to keep improving. You know, we're in a critical time in our season right now, so uh, we uh, we got to be hitting it on all cylinders and peaking at the right time. And and this is the time to peak. I mean, this is a, this is a real tough time in our schedule, and, uh, and it was good to have a good win, especially after the loss. I think you got to have good, positive win. You know, it's not just winning but doing it in the right way, and I feel like we did it in the right way. We're talking to Coach Stacy Carter. Every week we award, thanks to Coach Carter, so would you award this for these guys? It's absolutely the Kermit Tipton Foundation. We come out and we present an award or awards on the offensive and defensive player of the game each week before practice. And, and these kids are getting into this. They like it and they really cheer on their teammates. And so this week, uh, and this kid was all over the field, coach number 16, Brett Marcus, nine solos, three tackles for loss. Uh, the staff picked him as the defensive player of the game Friday night. He had a heck of a ball game. He did. What a great kid. And, you know, Brett's. Uh, He's one that's been in the program, work his tail off. Just a great kid, great student athlete too. Very smart kid, very intelligent. He's going to do great things, but he's a good football player for us. And he is, you know, he really changed himself from last year. He was a good player last year, but he got in the weight room and he got stronger. And he's a lot bigger than he used to be for sure. And, uh, you know, we got two good outside linebackers. I mean, Brett Marcus and Zach Kennedy are as good as they come. And I am glad to see Brett, Brett have that big game. And uh, it's well-deserved for him. Absolutely. The offensive player we picked no surprise here nine rushes 164 yards two touchdowns uh, caught a ball for eight yards had five solo tackles on the defensive side of the football but our offensive player no question number 25 elijah mathis had a had a big time night for the hilltoppers big time night and they only carried the ball nine times and who knows if what happens if you give it more but i mean he is a fantastic player and i uh, stepped up big force had to play the quarterback position never has done that and uh you know, we, we used that, and, and he made everybody look good on that one because it's uh, by him coming up. We Really, the reason we did that is uh, is we wanted to help Jalen out, okay, and being out, we wanted to make sure that they come out and didn't put all the pressure on them, have the senior step up and, uh, and, and get them a little cushion, which he did, and let them take the pressure off of them ready to play. And I think, you know, the plan worked out very well. It usually doesn't. You know, sometimes you got these plans, and it, it doesn't work out like that, but it, it worked out good, and I think it helped the other young quarterbacks play well also. Here's how classy Elijah Mathis is. I saw him in the parking lot Friday night after the game. I said, I'll probably call your name out this week in practice. He said, give it to the offensive line. He said, you know, I only could do as good as I did because of the offensive line, so give it out to them. And I thought, what a class kid to say that. After the night he had nine rushes, 164 yards, two touchdowns, he said, Mr. Taylor, give that to the offensive line. That's class right there. Uh, he's a good kid. Good kid. Been a great leader, and I'm glad he's on my team for a, a lot of reasons. But I can't tell you how proud I am of him as a player uh, and a person. Uh, you know, and it's uh, there's going to be great things ahead of him. You know, in football and in life. So uh, we're really proud of him. Hilltoppers win at 35 nothing. We take to the highway back in Big East Conference action. We'll take a look at Hardin Valley and take a look at the Big East Conference coming up next. As you're watching, we appreciate that very, very much. The Stacy Carter Coaches Show.
Discover the difference with Bracken Paving. Call the professionals at Bracken for your next paving project. 423-323-8197. Discover the difference with Bracken Paving. We welcome you back to Stacy Carter Coaches Show. I'm your host, Tom Taylor. Again, comes out new show every Wednesday at noon. Easy to find. TomTaylorSports.com is where everything's at. The ball games, the Tom Taylor Sports Show, and the Coaches Show. It's a one-stop shop for you. TomTaylorSports.com. Let's take a look at the Big East Conference standings heading into action this week. Marable at 3-0. Dobbins Minute at 2-0. Science Hill, Bradley Central, Hardin Valley all 1-1. One and one. Bearden at 1-2. And, and Jefferson County and William Blunt at 0-2 in the Big East Conference. Uh, you look at the schedule this week. Dobbins Minute plays at Marable on Thursday night. This week down in Marable, uh, Jefferson County goes to William Blunt. The Bear and Bulldogs will be at Bradley Central. Of course, we take on Hardin Valley. A football team coach, it's 1-1 uh, one one to the conference. Uh, they lost to Knox West 15-14. They beat Bearden 41-31. They shut out South Doyle 41-0. Lose in a heartbreaker at Dobbins Minute 24-22 on a bad snap late in the ball game for a safety. Then last week bounced back and beat Knox Powell 48-6. Hardin Valley, good football team. Good football team. Uh, another coach. Uh, he went to ETSU, West Jones, and uh, actually uh, Coach Beck used to coach with him at Cock County when he was the head coach at Cock County. So uh, very good football coach. For, first of all, I'm a good person. But, uh, you know, they're Hardin Valley's up and coming everything. Won a state championship last year in baseball. And, uh, you know, it's uh, it's a school that, you know, is, is starting to win in everything right now. You know, it's kind of the, probably the up and coming school in Knoxville, you know, and getting a lot of recognition now. So uh, he's doing a great job. I uh, watched the Dobbins Bennett game, of course, a lot since we were familiar with him. And, uh, you know, it's one of those games you look and say, you know, how, how did Hardin Valley lose that game? And, you know, they, uh, they played very, very well, and some breaks went against them. But, uh, you know, uh, we know what kind of football team they have. I thought their quarterback played outstanding. They got probably one of the best running backs, you know, other than those four or five Maribel have uh, together but uh, that, that we've seen. So he's got a great – and uh, they do a good job on defense. Uh, simple approach, kind of like Maribel on defense. But, you know, they're well coached. They, they do a good job. Uh, and they got a lot of good athletes and a lot of pride down there. So, uh, you know, this is a critical time of the season. I mean, this is this is the game that we have to have. So you're going to see some teams get beat, you know. And we knew when you throw Hardin Valley and Bradley Central and us and Dobbins Bennett and and Maryville, you know, somebody's going to get somebody. And uh, right in, in in this time frame, so we're hoping that's not us, and we want to get down there and, and, and get this win. So this is a big time game for us, and probably the, probably right now the most important game in our season. Uh, how things have went. Absolutely, because things are starting to shape up for the playoffs coming up in the not too distant future. And of course, as we said, Science Hill one and one, Hardin Valley at one and one. They're three and two overall. We're four and one. And so, uh, yeah, you got to get down there because after that we we'll come home for William Blunt, Jeff County, then wrap up the season on the road on the two and two. Then we'll go to Knox Beard and then wrap things up October 30th at Dobbins Minute. So big road game, Hardin Valley. Of course, uh, as you said, tough loss. Uh, by them to Dobbins Minute in Kingsport. So they want to get back in the win column of the Big East Conference. So uh, it's going to be a very, very critical football game for both teams. As you see, we're both in the middle of the pack right now as far as the uh, the standing of the Big East Conference. So uh, you've watched some film. We'll continue to watch some film. Uh, how do you beat these guys? What, what's, uh, what's the scouting report on Hardin Valley? Well, I mean, like – I think you already said the quarterback's a good player. I mean, he, he's a good player and the running back's a good player. And, you know, they run a spread offense, kind of different from what Wes usually does. I mean, he is a, a eye formation, two tight ends type of guy. And I think uh, just knowing that, you got to know that the running game's important, no matter if they're in a the spread or not. They're, they're, they're going to have importance running the football. He's a old uh, offensive lineman, a center, and uh, that's important to him. And he does such a great job with that, too. So I think, first of all, defensively, you have to stop that run. I mean, no matter if it's a spread, offense or not that that's where they're going to try to get seams and with that great running back they're going to try to do things and then to have the quarterback kind of boot out and get some drags and stuff like that off the uh, boot series but you know they're they're a good good team and uh and defensively you know we we got to execute like we've been executing uh, like similarities to Maribel have to do some of the same stuff we were going to do at Maribel before Justin went down and uh looks like we're going to have Justin which is a good thing so uh you know we got got to get there and and we just got to play well we just got to keep doing what we're doing and uh keep executing and uh cut down on the penalties and uh and just take the momentum from Friday and just just keep on going 
Play Stacy Carter Hilltopper football is the name of the game. We'll have it before beginning at 7 o'clock on Friday night on the Blue Lizard pregame show. And, of course, kickoff at 730. We'll be there with Coach in the Hilltoppers Harden Valley. Uh, all you got to do is, again, go to uh, – uh, livestream.com, type in Tom Taylor Productions, and there will be, and or TomTaylorSports.com. We're working to have them both. And so bottom line is we'll have it for you on the road. Don Shepard and myself will bring it to you. We'll jump on the bus and ride with Coach. 7 o'clock pregame, kickoff at 7.30. Coach, big game. We're going to be right there with you. The Topper Nation, last time we went on the road, Bradley Central. Uh, it's not as far, obviously, uh, this week to go to Hardin Valley. We had a good, good crowd and a vocal crowd down at Bradley Central, and, and the guys are going to need that again Friday night. We definitely are. You know, it's the another thing about this game, the road trip, it, it does matter. I mean, it really does. And and we know we, we got to travel, you know, a little over two hours to play that game. So, uh, you know, the kids got to you – know, the good thing about it, we have charter buses. We're going to stop and eat in Strawberry Plains. So, uh, you know, we got a good trip schedule. We're used to that. But, uh, I mean, it's different. You know, there's a home field advantage. So, we got to be in there and be ready when we get, that, get out there and get ready to play. Let's go. Go, go Toppers. toppers. This is the man. Hey, I appreciate you very much watching the Stacy Carter Coaches Show. For producer Robert Kill and Coach Carter, I'm Tom Taylor again. Uh, 7 o'clock Friday night, we'll be ready to go to bring it to you from Hardin Valley. Also, this show will be up and ready to go Wednesday at noon. Brand new show each week, the Stacy Carter Coaches Show. Saying thanks to our sponsors, Blue Lizard, Champion Chevrolet, and Chick-fil-A. For Coach Carter and Robert Kale, this is Tom Taylor, your host. As always, telling you win or lose, be a good sport. We'll see you next week, and go Toppers. <laughs>